Hi, my name is Bonnie Barker. I'm with BonnieBigCrochet.com and today I wanted to demonstrate for you a simple granny square. Um, I'm going to go ahead and start. I'm just using worsted weight yarn or uh, some of you may be familiar with the Super Saver yarn by Red Heart Yarns and I'm using a size I or 9 or 5.50 millimeter crochet hook. Um, you can use a variety of yarns and hook sizes, so if this is not exactly what you have, don't worry. Just use what you have to, sh to, to try to learn this today. Okay, so I'm going to start with a slip knot. If you're, a, if you're a very much a beginner and need to learn some of these basic stitches, I do have some others, other videos that would be really good to start with before we do the granny square. But if you want to go ahead and start with this, come along. Alright, so I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to chain four. Now I'm going to make a ring by working a slip stitch in the first chain that I just worked and pull it through and I get a little a small donut or I like to call a cheerio here. Now I'm going to chain three, one, two, three and I'm going to work two double crochets going right into the center of the ring. Okay. Now I'm going to chain two. The chain twos in the granny square um, are actually going to be the corners. Let me show you one other thing. I am taking this extra strand and I am actually putting that on the outside of this of the ring and I am crocheting around that as well. It's just a, a quick and easy way to hide the strand. Okay, now I am crocheting three double crochets. I'm going to chain two. I'm going to turn a little bit and I'm going to do three more double crochets all worked inside the very same ring. Okay, and I'm going to chain two. I'm going to give you a, a nice view of this. You can see how it's coming together. It's starting to become a square and these are going to be the corners. So I did another chain two and I'm going to do three more double crochets right in the center. Okay, chain two. And now let's let's take a look at this. We only did two double crochets here. And the reason for that is that this chain three serves as an alternate double crochet. If we put an extra double crochet there, this side would be extra wide and it would kind of be all out of sorts. So now we are just going to do a slip stitch. I'm going to work through two of the strands if you can see that. Slip stitch. Now normally, if we were going to be changing colors at this point, we would go ahead and fasten this off. I would pull this tight and then we would join in another corner with a different color. Um, this is just a more simplified version of a granny square. This is going to be all worked in one color, just to show you an alternative to changing colors every round. Okay, so we've chained one, two, three. Now I'm going to turn. Now before I do that, I am going to clip this strand so I don't have to look at it anymore. Okay, now we're going to be working in the corner again whenever you have a corner after the chain three you're going to do two double crochets chain two and then three double crochets always looking for that giving the effect of the three stitch cluster I'm going to call this a cluster now I'm going to only chain one since it's going to be in between corners and now we go to the next corner and we work another corner three double crochets, chain two, and three double crochets. Now I'm going to chain one because I'm in between corners and I go to the next corner and we do three double crochets. Chain two, I'm going to turn a little bit, and we're going to work three more double crochets in the same corner. Chain one, 
and then we're going to work our last corner okay these corners are going to be a little more understandable once we get past this this round i may have called these rows but they're rounds because they go around all right chain two and then three more Okay, now I'm going to chain one and I'm going to join to this slip stitch just like so. Now I'm going to chain three. One, two, three. Before I do, let me show you. <coughs> Excuse me. Okay, now the corners are always going to have three double crochet, chain two, three double crochet worked in this space. Now when we get to the spaces like this that are not a corner, you are only going to work three double crochets in those. Okay. You turn. Now this is our, well, well, serves functionally as a double crochet. So we're only going to do two double crochets in this space. Then we're going to chain one. Now we're going to work our corner. Okay. Three double crochets. chain two and three double crochets now we get to the next part where there is just a space there we're going to chain one and we are only going to work three double crochets only one cluster chain one now we've gotten to a corner again. It seems like there are an awful lot of corners when you're starting this project off and it's because that's all you're working as you're beginning this. But once you get this square a bit bigger, if, if that is your goal, the corners are going to be much more uh, infrequent. Okay, now chain one. Now we only do three as we go across. Okay, one other thing I wanted to point out before I go any further. You always have a chain two at the corner, but in between the clusters as you're going across, just put one chain there. If you put two, it's, it's going to give much more of a ripply effect and it's not going to lay flat. So just one, one chain in between everywhere except the corners is where you're going to have chain two. It just seems like they've done a lot of chain twos because we mostly have had corners. Case in point, here's another corner. Chain two. Okay, chain one. The very first afghan I ever made, I started off with the help of my neighbor um, when I was seven years old. And <clears throat> she had made a couple of these afghans where you just start off as a granny square and you just go round and round and round. She was alternating between blue and green. I'm sorry, between green and yellow. So I followed suit and made mine the same color that she did. And it you know, eventually became big enough to put on my bed. It was a lot of fun to do, and I certainly learned how to do double crochet during that adventure. It took me two years to finish that project. Okay, so I'm going to do one more one more round for you. One, two, three. Turn. And you can see there's more spaces that aren't corners here. Okay, so I did the chain one. I'm sorry, the chain three, which serves as a double crochet, and then I put two more double crochets. Chain one. Now I do the corner. This can get as big or as you know as big as you'd like it to be. Chain two. And three double crochets again. Now we have chain one. Three double crochets, or I, I guess you could call this a cluster. Chain one and three more double crochets chain 2 
chain one and then a corner. Um, let me also say one more thing about this. Um, be sure that you're careful to do the three double crochet, chain two, three double crochet in the same corner as you get to the corners. I, I cannot tell you how many times I've, you know, gone right by the corner, just put three stitches in there and then have to come back and rip out a lot of stitching because I lost my corner. So you want to make sure you, you know, pay attention to where you are. In, in this pattern, even though it's a you know a simpler pattern, you you, you can still get lost and um, have to do a fair amount of ripping out, and, and and that's never fun, especially if it's more than one round. That can be really frustrating. Okay, I'm gonna um, now we have three double crochets in the space, chain one. So I think I think by this time you should get the idea of what you're to do here. Um, I want to make one other observation before I end this video and, and that is notice that when you stake to a solid color and you don't restart each round it's it's a lot easier for one thing because you don't have to all, hide all these knots every for every round that you do um, and that's a big plus for me and it really does <clears throat> kind of hide the seam here. Here's the seam that you are going to have when you when you do it this way. Okay, now if you change colors every round, you can change where you connect. Therefore, you won't have a seam, which is which is kind of an advantage too. But I just wanted to show you also how you have the back side facing and then the front side facing then the back side, and then the front side. And of course, when you work this pattern, it's not truly a back or a front, but um, would be reversible. So, you know, it doesn't matter which side, you know, is up. Both sides can effectively be the front side. Okay, I'll go ahead and finish this round and show you what I have. Okay, I wanted to show you the finished, or at least the finished sample that I'm going to work for you today. Um, this can be worked... Um, like I said, any size, you can keep going pretty much indefinitely. You can change colors after, you know, a pre-designated number of rows. Um, there is no front and back. Both are interchangeable. Okay. If you like this and you want to learn another small and quick project, um, I have another one called Granny Square Slippers that are on, that is on my YouTube channel. It's in two parts. Part one shows you how to make the the uh, granny squares. It's basically the same as what I've done here, with the exception that you're going to be changing yarn at the end of every round, and I do show you how to do that. Um, and then video number two is how to construct them. So again, you know, get it, give them a give that a try if you'd like, um, and check out any of my other videos here. If you have any questions, I love hearing from you. Um, please. Um, contact me. You can contact me on this YouTube site or you can email me at bonniebay at me.com. I love to hear from people and I do respond. God bless you guys. Bye-bye.